that tazharul fitan wa yaksarul harj he is talking of the last centuries of his ummah referring to the present time in which we are living now he said qalu ya rasulullah ayyuma huwa qala al qatl al qatl this hadith has been debated related by abu huraira a famous companion and reported by imam bukhari in muslim and sahih muslim muttafaq alayh what the prophet said the time would draw nearer and then he said that on the surface of earth disruptions mischief will rise and haraj will arise and it will appear in abundance people submitted to holy prophet or messenger of allah what is haraj this was a specific term holy prophet said keep in your mind that time the haraj would be killing and killing and mass killing of the people and the people committing this act the killings and killings and mass killings of the people they will go outside from the ambit of my deen this was a clear cut reference in categorical reference to the act of terrorism again i am quoting second hadith in relation to the meanings of islam this hadith is also mentioned in sunan abi daud one of the authentic hadith books of the six books after bukhari muslim and reported by abdullah bin umar a great companion he says that we were sitting around holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kunna na'udan inda rasulillah fa zakar al fitan i will just uh, with, uh, with, uh, with pardon i will just if you permit me sometimes to quote some arabic words because i know this talk is going to be delivered to the arab world also and i don't want to address only the english youth i want to address the arabic youth and to all parts of the world so that everybody be understand that these are not only my sentiments i am not saying something as an innovation i am quoting each and everything from the quranic terms and from the hadith and sunnah of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that the message clearly goes to every part of the world i think you will allow me to or this because this would be the substantiation of the subject what we are saying here holy prophet said fa zakar al fitan he holy prophet mentioned disruptions and he said fa aksar fi zikriha hatta zakara fitnat al ahlas fa qala qail ya rasulullah wa ma fitnat al ahlas qala hiya harab wa harb this is hadith of sunan abi daud hadith number is 4242 umar reports abdullah bin umar we were one sitting with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he described disruptions and when he described disruptions at length he mentioned the disruption of ahlas a specific term he used disruption fitna of ahlas so people asked ya rasulullah what is the what would be the fitna of alas in later centuries and later times of your ummah in this mankind what would be the fitna of alas he said it is a chaos it would be anarchy it would be violence it would be militancy it would be killing and killing and terrorism i am quoting the numbers of hadith from authentic text of the hadith of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which were delivered 15 centuries before our time nothing which i will deliver today is an innovated thing or just an ijtihad which i have derived just directly as an interpretation i am quoting the texts of holy prophet if anybody believes in the text of the traditions of holy prophet if anybody claims to be a believer of the text of quran he should go and study all these texts and references and find it out through this fatwa if anything has been quoted wrongly or if anything has been interpreted wrongly and if whatever i will quote today is correct in its text as well as in its interpretation and explanation then they have to rethink 100 times that the track which they have adopted or the line which they have been pushed by uh, by brainwashing whether they are going to paradise or they are going to have a deal of hell fire so this was what holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam declared that that would be the violence and mass killing would be the greatest disruption in the history of last time next very important aspect of this edict is many scholars 
I know they have already condemned the act of terrorism. This is not a new act of condemnation. It has been condemned. But with two, there would be two main differences between those condemnations and the condemnation which this fatwa contains with. Number one, either some people condemn it with ifs and buts. Whenever the word but is attached to the condemnation, it means you are going to create some exceptional and exemptional clauses. Then this condemnation of extremism or terrorism is regarded to a specific situation for a specific persons. So most of condemnation lack absolute and comprehensive and unconditional and unqualified condemnation was lacking. Except a few. One thing. This was a need of time that an absolute and unconditional and unqualified and a total condemnation should come up from the Muslim world on the world terrorism on act of militancy terrorism without giving any exception to any kind of excuse any reason playing with the pretext and playing with ifs and buts without ifs and buts one should declare this was the need of the time that the Muslim Ummah should stand up against the enemies of Islam against the enemies of Islam I mean enemies of humanity the terrorists are the biggest enemies of Islam someone should stand up and the group of scholars should stand up to condemn it absolutely to declare that terrorism is terrorism and no good intention can make provide any justification to act of terrorism no pretext no discussion of foreign policy of certain country no occupation no involvement of a country in a warfare these things cannot provide any kind of justification to a group of individuals to an organization to a certain set of people that this provides them an authority to take up the arms and create terrorism and to kill the people civilian people those who have nothing to do with the killings so some this was a need of the time someone should come up so this fatwa is declaring the absolute condemnation because my main, I have put a chapter here that no good intention even 1000 good intentions together cannot justify a wrong and forbidden act and these good intentions cannot convert a wrong into good they cannot convert an evil into good terrorism is terrorism violence is violence it has no place in Islamic teachings and no justification can be provided to it on the basis of any kind of excuses or ifs or buts. And the second major thing is that mostly the scholars have gone up to the limit of that this is a forbidden act. They condemn and declare that terrorism is a forbidden act. The second unique character and I take responsibility because I have declared it I have stated this is not only a forbidden act this is an act of disbelief the terrorists on the basis of Quranic references and the traditions of Holy Prophet they go out of the ambit of Islam they go out of the Ummah of Holy Prophet they are not only committing a forbidden act an act of Haram they are committing an act of Kufr this is maybe some people may think this is a very new thing that the people used to say this is haram, this is forbidden, this is against Islam, this is un-Islamic. To say this is un-Islamic is something different. And to say this is an act of kufr, the, 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 the terrorists go out of the ambit of Islam. And reason is that Almighty Allah and Holy Prophet of Islam has declared them to be out of his ummah and out of the ambit of Islam. This is my second a unique aspect of this addict. They can't claim that their suicide bombings are martyrdom operations. They are becoming the heroes of Muslim Ummah. No, they are becoming the heroes of hellfire. They are leading towards hellfire. There is no place of any martyrdom. And their act is never ever to be considered a jihad. Not a single person. Maybe Usama or anybody else.